here's what I'm afraid of happening. There's two scenarios happening, right? Trump wins the presidency against Hillary Clinton. Which and, is horrifying on its face. Which is horrifying. But the problem with a corporate Democrat as the president is that they split the natural opposition to whatever corporate program they're pushing. For instance, when there was Occupy Wall Street, that split the net instead of all the lefties and liberals and progressives and environmentalists and everything who was an independence being behind Occupy Wall Street because we had a corporatist Democrat president, half the Democrats sided with the president, so he splits the natural opposition to it. Barack Obama didn't support Occupy Wall Street, and he certainly didn't go and stand with those teachers in Wisconsin, right? So that's the problem. When having a corp, so let's say Hillary Clinton does win the presidency. Well, the banks are going to crash again. Our income disparity is only going to get bigger. And then people are still looking. People are still, still looking for a revolution. Even Barack Obama said during the 2008 campaign, this is a direct quote from Barack Obama in the 2008 campaign. The American people are tired of politics that are dominated by the powerful and by the well-connected. They want their government back. That was the sentiment in the country eight years ago. It's only intensified because the problems he was talking about have only intensified. We've had Citizens United since then, which means that corporations and big money now control government even more. That government is bought even more. It's even more corrupt than it was eight years ago, and people want their government back even more. Now, if Hillary becomes president, it splits that not natural opposition to that again. Barack Obama split the natural opposition to corporatism, right? He, because half the Democrats said, come on, you got to go along with TPP. Come on, you got, hey, maybe we shouldn't stand with the teachers in Wisconsin. Hey, we do you see what I'm Hey, quantitative easing for that we have, we're going to bail out Wall Street. We're not bailing out Main Street. So he split the natural opposition to all his corporatist Wall Street bullshit policies. Hillary Clinton will do the same thing if she's president. So we won't make any progress. But here's the, the problem. The banks will crash again when she's president. They were too big in 2008. They're even bigger now. She doesn't see them as a problem. So she's not going to address it. They're just going to probably maybe even get bigger. And and they're going to crash again. And then what happens? We get eight years of Republicans and our country just spirals out of control. That's my fear. That's my fear. We elect her. She splits the opposition. She implements more bullshit corporatist policies. We get a bigger income disparity than we had now, just like we have a bigger income disparity now than when Barack Obama took over because Democrats aren't addressing those things at all. Robert, do you have anything to say? I, I Well, I I think that you're there there is something that you're missing which is the um there is the libertarian wing of the republican party so what you could see because basically what's happened in the last 30 years is that we always see that the congress ends up splitting with the presidency so we ended up with a split government for the most part so what you could see in the congress with a hillary uh uh, presidency is you could see the libertarian wing of the party of the Republican Party uh, forming a coalition, a strong coalition within the Congress that would act as more of a stopgap against economic interests. I could see that happening uh, very easily simply because uh, that reactionary, like simply reaction, reacting to the status quo strain is in the ethos so strongly as exemplified by Donald, by the, the attraction of Donald Trump. Um, so I, I just, I'm not sure that that's entirely true, but it would make, it would be, no matter what happens, there is no way going forward we're going to see the same government we have in the past i think we're going to see the same government of hillary clinton as president and i think the problem with your idea of a libertarian coalition is that they don't really have the ideas of how to fix the economy libertarians they don't understand uh, about infrastructure spending they don't understand about investing they don't understand about if you give people free education it actually helps your economy it's not a drain on your economy it's an investment that pays for itself so these are the things that we need in this country these it's not it's not the true libertarians it's the people who have been who were complaining about the bank bailout have been complaining about too big to fail but don't really understand that they're in the wrong party to do it <laughs> yes. like who think like these banks have all this power and they don't understand like, you know, 
government has the power to break them up. Like if you if you finally like get get with that program and realize. So, I, you know, I don't I don't know about that going forward. I do know but, for a fact that every every four years we have to elect somebody who is going to make Supreme Court appointments. And that is the one area where I get really hesitant because in the long run, you're right. In the long run, a Trump presidency would do more for for Democrats winning the winning the White House over and over and yes. over again than anything. Yes. But in that time, I could see Donald Trump appointing a Latvian hooker to the to the yeah, but Supreme the, Court. He still has to get confirmed by the Senate, which, believe me, if uh, is it's probably going to flip. It has a very good chance that it's going to flip right now. The Senate, so the Democrats will control the Senate, right? So no matter who Trump proposes as if he if he comes out and proposes Robert Bork, they'll Bork him. You know what I mean? I think that or they'll it'll be their responsibility to. And the beauty of a Donald Trump presidency is that the natural opposition to all those crazy policies can now unify and be strong because that's the majority. Americans are progressive. You know, Americans, if you ask them, they think they're conservative. When you ask them issue by issue, they're liberal. We know Uh, this. Right. So I think you're pointing out something really interesting, though. Americans are naturally oppositional. And I think that that the the Democrats have done their best work always when they were the underdog, always, uh, like when w- during the 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 Reagan years, the the Democrats were the best party going because they were articulating themselves in opposition to to Ronald Reagan. I think that uh, the Democrats were probably at their worst in the later Clinton years. Oh, no doubt about it. What happened was, you know, Reagan scared the hell out of the Democrats and Bill Clinton. Then if you can't beat them, join them is what Bill Clinton did. And that's what we're living with right now. So now we don't have a party that represents. It used to be the Republicans represented business interests and then the Democrats represented the workers. And it was a good tension. Right. You needed that. Well, now we have two parties representing the business interests, Wall Street and business in, in both parties. And that's been the problem since Bill Clinton. And that was the problem. That's why Ralph Nader ran in 2000. That was what Barack Obama's message was. I just read to you what his message was. His message was the people want to take their government back. So it's even deeper now. I think that Citizens United is not nearly the problem that people think it is because what it, it is, I mean, I it, agree. it is a very serious problem, but the much, much more chilling effect to effective democracy nationwide right now, not just nationwide, but statewide, uh, is gerrymandering by far and away. And the best thing, by far the best thing, and much more powerful than uh, overturning Citizens United, the best thing would be for the Justice Department to go, that's it. Every single state's election laws have to be reviewed. That is that that is exactly what it should be. Well, we we would like to see uh, and the weakness of the Justice Department's response to overturning the Voting Rights, the Voting Act, Rights Act was pathetic. Pathetic. Pathetic, and again, you know, if we there was a Republican in office when that happened, the whole the the whole country or a, a, a majority of the country would have rose up against that Supreme Court decision and the Voting Rights Act, and they would have forced them to pass another one. Except Barack Obama sp- didn't did, his Justice Department didn't they didn't make a big stink out of it. They don't go crazy. They're not talking about it every day. The Republicans are doing this in plain view, su- suppressing the vote all over the country. They're doing it in. Plain plain view. There's nothing more un-American than taking away the one man, one vote from people. And the Justice Department and Barack Obama barely mention it. They barely talk about it. They're, they should be screaming about it at the top of their lungs all the time. And this is what I'm talking about. We need real opposition to corporatist bullshit in this country. And if Hillary Clinton is our president, we won't get it. The thing about if Trump becomes president, we'll probably flip the Senate to Democrat. Good chance to flip the Congress to, to Democrat after, in two years after that because he's president. I don't think it's a nightmare scenario that people think. You forget Trump is president, coalesces all the people against him. And even, uh, uh, you know, the majority of Republicans aren't voting for Trump right now. Think about that. In Illinois, he won. I looked at the numbers just before I did the show. He got like 39 percent of the vote in Illinois, which means 61 percent of the Democrats voting in the the Republican primary didn't want Trump. So he so my point is, don't freak out if Donald Trump becomes president. It's not it's it might even boomerang to be a good thing for America. 